Well, hello there again, friends. Today is 6-6-2022, and today is the Odin Project Vlog Day 116. Um, so today I focused on what I ended the last video on. Today was a focus on getting the display to show something. <laughs> and um, at the same time, also uh, kind of building out the back end. And we'll go, that's what I uh, was able to successfully complete for the most part uh, for this video. So we'll, uh, we'll go over that. And uh, really there wasn't a lot to configure on the air quotes back end. Um, it, it, it will, I'll explain my mindset and what I thought process with that too. Um, since you guys uh, are aware of what to expect when you get to this part if, you, if you're watching ahead. But uh, without further ado, let's get started. So the we're in the index.html right here, and the only thing I changed here was just simply a name. Uh, the div class projects here was was here from the uh, uh, it was ported over from the library app. I just changed it from books to projects. So some of the stuff I'm going to gloss over, but it's just going to be renaming classes and selectors, mostly for. Uh, uh, you know for CSS purposes for visual um, because you'll see here at the end when I showcase in the browser that it does uh, look a lot like and functions sim very similar to the library app I decided at least at this per current moment I was just gonna go with that layout because it was already built out already and I kind of liked it to be honest so but it's not all the way done yet um, but you'll, you'll see so let's uh, move on and we'll head over to index.js um, did I do anything on here? I didn't add anything on the uh, index file here for the JavaScript um, for this video. Uh, yeah. So styling again. I just did some changes. We won't go over it, but basically it's it, it's it's the same as last video and the other stuff's been ported over from the other project, and I just changed the names. Basically anything, anything I said uh, books, I changed to projects. And just some selector renaming, really. Nothing crazy there. Um, and then we head over to uh, create to do. So this is called when the button is pressed for um, for um, the submit to do. When that's done, when that's clicked, it, this is invoked as we learned before. And this is all went over in the last video. Um, so the only thing I added, I kept the to-do array. Um, <laughs> I'm still, honestly, at this even this moment, I'm still not using it. So I'm still keeping it there just in case I want to use it. Um, but um, at the end, I'll clean, I'll clean all this up at the last video when I'm closing up the project and delete that if I don't need it. But so far, I haven't used it. Um, I had a question, big question mark around if I was going to need to have an array for each uh, each task I was using, you know, for the uh, web storage API backend. But it doesn't. It uses um, it uses objects and strings. So um, actually, arrays just comp for what I'm doing. Arrays just complicate things. So um, didn't use it. <laughs> So I have I did put this in here though call storage module and push object to local storage. So that's what this it's calling the save to do to do to local. I know it's a mouthful, and it's passing in title description, due date, priority, and checklist that was all computed up here, and then uh, strategically placing that right before um, the clear form, um, just so we have uh, no issues possibly you know with uh, having any of these uh, properties being empty so that calls the save to do to local and that is a, an imported function from the top import save to do to local from manage local storage js so that's a, a new module introduced in this video that I created and this is uh, so far I'll, it'll be there'll be more being added to this probably but right now this is the this is the magic that happens for the storage. So one of the things, I'll precursor this by saying this. What I thought, um, I said it in the beginning of the video a couple minutes ago about expectations of what um, 
what your your uh, web eight web local storage does. So it, it does not, and don't think of it, because this is what I did, and it's a wrong assumption. Do not think of it as a database, because <laughs> it's not. Um, for instance, when you use, uh, as you see on the screen here, there's local storage.setItem. When you use that, it, it acts like a database, essentially. You can set it um, initially, but when you call it again, and it sees that something's already in there with that title name, it will write over it. Um, and it will display it back out to you if you do get item, uh, and we'll go over all that. But I just want to let you know that it's it's not really a total, totally a crud type solution, because uh, the state changes. So basically, you get one state saved per session per item. So if you save a title and then you go back to local storage and do you know you update the title to a different value that will update this right here and your original title will leave so it'll be permanently erased it'll just be overwritten so there's no um, there's no database functionality like I thought there would be it's literally just a uh, a snapshot of the latest value that you're setting or getting so hope that makes sense it'll make more sense as we go through it but um, so we uh, import. We have an import function at the top, display to do, and that's from coming out of uh, DOM manip. And uh, I have that because we're having that called here, and that's a new a new uh, import function that I added into. Excuse me, <clears throat> added into DOM manip, and we'll go over that as well. But here's an export function uh, that was called from create to do. This is called save to do local, and it takes in title, description, due date, priority checklist, and we're doing a console out log for diagnostic purposes, saving object to local storage, and all this right here is kind of what it looks like. So you have local storage dot set item, and then in quotes is your title, which is basically uh, the name of the item, and then your second part of it after the comma, the second value, it takes two two um, inputs. Um, your key string is is that, and then the so it's a key value pair basically. So your key is title in this example, um, and then value would be your document dot get element by ID title dot value. Kind of seems redundant, but basically it's taking uh, the value, the input, you know, the value, the the text content of title, and assigning it to title in local storage. And it's doing that again for description, due date, priority, and the only one that's a little bit different is the checklist, and that's only because if you remember from previous videos, we didn't have a value we used for checklist because we let the user manip manipulate the uh, LIs. So this checklist is a parameter coming from up here, which is a um, parameter coming out of create to do, which we want. Um, because you know we've done all this kung fu on it and put it into you know we filtered out the and cleanse the data we removed the X from it so we want to bring in the property of the checklist we do not want to redo all this work because that's just going to be more overhead more processor time so you just do that by you still have to set item if you don't give it a key key value pair argument basically if you don't give it two arguments it will error I tried tried it <laughs> and it will give you an error um, saying that uh, only one argument was provided so checklist is the um, key and the value is checklist so it's inputting that so that checklist is the uh, comma separated list if you will and that's getting assigned to the checklist local storage item and after we assign all that to uh, setting it setting all those items and assigning them in local storage we're going to do display to do and so again, like I mentioned, that's something new, a new module that I also created in Dominip. So if you go over to Dominip, um, is there anything I put in the top? Nope. So we're down here, I put it down at the bottom. <clears throat> I have a, it's kind of a big one here. Uh, export function, there you go. Uh, display to do. And um, 
we're going to start by uh, checking and clearing current display DOM, if any. And we're doing this the same uh, thought process and methodicals as we've done before. Basically, when you're running through this, and you'll see this in the browser, uh, well, you won't because I actually had this block of code, but basically how it, without this block of code, uh, you could have something in the DOM already. Say you already had a to-do and you added a new to-do. Well, now you have two cars and two to-dos, <laughs> if that makes sense. So you add this block of code. Basically, this is from the – this comes right out of my logic, actually, other than the um, renaming of the selector. It's the same exact logic as before. So basically, we're going to have a variable called remove divs. It's going to query selector all the cards that are on the uh, display on the screen and in the DOM, I mean. And then we're a console log. Show me the node count of the current card divs. Not that important, but just for diagnostic purposes. And then we have a for loop that runs through the length of the uh, remove divs, and we're going to remove each one. This for loop's nothing new. Uh, we've done this uh, a couple times already in various uh, functions in this project. So basically, this uh, wipes out all the display items, um, all the divs that are in the display section. And then a second uh, section here, we're going <coughs> to, excuse me, Tretz is active. We're going to create the display card for the display DOM. So we're going to log display screen, just to tell ourselves that we're at this line, of the, we're at this portion of the code. And we're going to create a, a constant variable projects that takes on document.query selector projects. And then we're also going to create a constant card that takes on create element.div. So we're going to create a div called card and then we're going to give card a classless name of card and this is for the uh, needed for the uh, CSS and then we're going to append it to projects so we're going to create the card and we're going to append it to projects which pro projects is the the uh, tag we looked at earlier in the HTML and it's hard coded in so that's why we just query selector that Second, next section is gather data from local backend storage and initialize. This is um, so instead of setting item, we're getting item now. So basically, we're going back to the w uh, web API and we're saying, I want to uh, get all the information that I had previously. And I just realized as I was talking through this, I need to make a note because um, I haven't fully tested this out, but I just realized that if I run this at a certain point and if it if it looks and there's not any information to get, it'll probably crash. Like if if, if it calls to the back end local storage and there's nothing in one of these, it might crash. So I need to put a note here. Um, let's see, check. Let's put this write this down real quick. Sorry about that, but I won't remember if I don't. <laughs> okay, check. Uh, get item. Let's see, just back end for code break. Okay, that'll be enough. And I'll look at that uh, later. <clears throat> but what this does is uh, it uh, creates uh, local variables: title, description, due date, priority, and checklist. And we're just we're just initializing and, and grabbing the local storage item, so it just what it looks like. So we're going out to that local storage, and we're getting title, description, due date, priority, and checklist, and we are um, assigning them to the same variable, so we can use them uh, locally within this display to do function. And then we're going to place data in a local temp array and loop over the key value pairs and display it to the DOM. There's probably other ways to do this, but I kung fu'd with the array, the temp array, and uh, if you noticed, I've tried to get better with my um, my camel casing. Uh, so I put the underscore in front of it because a long time ago we learned in one of the videos that if you have a local variable that's not used outside of the um, outside of that function, um, it's or that um, yeah that function or chunk of code, it's good practice to put underscore in front of it, and so that's exactly what I did. And so I have the local variable or local array uh, called display array, and it's taking on uh, title, description, due date, priority, checklist as an object. Since with the mustache bracket there, console.log display array, so we can see it. 
and then we loop through a key pair like we did in the uh, in the library app project from a while back. So we're going to do let key and display array. So every time we're going to see key, which just is kind of kind of overkill maybe because we only ha we don't display array only contains and only ever will contain one item because because of the way I've got it wrote out, it's in the way the logic set there is no multiple to do's there's only one to do because like I said earlier you have to have the, assump the correct assumption <laughs> that I had to learn as I was going through this that the web API is really just a a present moment static type setup that's not a it's not true persistence where it'll remember multiple you know I guess you could create multiple arrays and variables and stuff and as long as you don't call them and write and call them again later to update them they'll though uh, you could have you know older information but really it's a it's not a true cred setup it's just a persistent static one-time type deal so if that makes sense so we're constant logging just so we can for your diagnostic purpose so we can see it and then the for statement um, is looping through the single uh, display item display array uh, key pair and we're counts out logging for um, just for um, diagnostic purposes the key and the display array key so it's gonna basically spit out the property title colon and then the string um, and it will look like that basically on the on the tooltip sort of um, so we have uh, const para uh, equals document dot create elements we're going to create a paragraph element p tag and then pair dot text content is going to receive what we just counted out logged and then we're going to through each loop we're also going to append the para to the card and that will put it to the screen each time and we're only doing this for mainly for two reasons one we loop through so we can get the key pair uh, like I said there's other ways to do this you don't have to do the for loop if you just want to you know, code in your title, description, due date, priority checklist manually in HTML. You could do that as just p tags or 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 an, or an unordered list or whatever, and then use DOM manipulation to just display your array items and just make sure that your order is correct so that the you know the right uh, the right DOM you know gets manipulated. Uh, but this just made more sense for where I was at and it was easier for me just to make the uh, local array and be done with it so again maybe not the best way maybe not the only way it's just my way <laughs> so that's how I have that set up and so if you um, yeah so if you put that I think that's I think that's it for the logic so if you go out here, add new to do, do test, test, due date, we'll say Friday, priority high, we'll add some items to the checklist, test one, test two, and test three. Okay, so there's our, we're gonna, we like them. We didn't make any errors or any typos to say for the user. We like that, so we're gonna submit the to-do. So here's what it does is, so it says display to screen. Uh, well, first off it says um, saving object to local storage. Um, show me the node count. So there, there's the node count for the, again, it's always, <laughs> I, I don't know why that's in there, but it's always going to be zero because we only have one node. Um, uh, display the screen, and then here's the uh, console log for the object. So we see that's coming over nicely. Uh, there's your uh, test one, two, and three for the check checklist with a string with comma separated values, description string of test, due date uh, six ten twenty twenty two is a string. Priority high is a string, title test is a string. So then we have, again, the consult log for verboseness. So we have it coming through here is the same, everything in Dominip coming over as a test. And there it is uh, on the screen. So you see it there. The cards were created, title, description, due date, priority, and checklist were created via that, uh, that loop we just went through. So basically, if we didn't have the for loop, we wouldn't get this 
nicely here like this we would have to uh, like I said you could create now that you see it uh, what I was saying before is you could create you know paragraph tag or whatever um, for title description due date priority checklist and just hard code it into your HTML and then do DOM manipulation for the values you definitely could do that too um, it, it would it would look obviously different than this but um, but you could do that as well if you wanted to just something different that you could do if you if you're uh, looking at this a different way um, and that's it so I think in the next video I you see this this is a static list and I definitely don't like that so I'm thinking as a user if I'm wanting to uh, mark off the checklist as I go because this is a to-do item and say it had three sub checklist items I think it would be cool to be able to interact with it and click it and either remove it or put a line through it when you're done with it and so it, it acts as a true to-do list so I have to figure out a way and this is my next challenge I was not trying to do this before this video but it didn't really make sense I was uh, running into some issues so I decided to back out what I was working on so for next video I'm gonna work on how to make this basically interactive I wanted to make it more like this over here where you're adding it in and you can either remove it but instead of having an X, I don't want to remove it because we already know we want it. I just want to maybe like click it or something and then it crosses it off or grays it out or something to show or that it's completed or puts a you know a checkbox through it or something. Um, and then I'm going to uh, enact some buttons, enable and code in some buttons down here for deleting the, pro the to do, which will delete the whole card when you're done. And then I'll probably have something around the project. I still haven't decided with the project yet. If I'm going to leave it over here, it's still not doing anything. It's just sitting over here. <laughs> um, I'm still not sure if I, I want to do a predefine on the project, like leave it over here or move this back over here and you know put it down here or something. But um, that may be for a, a later video. But I for sure will be working on making the checklist here, if I can, figure out a way to make it more interactive. Um, either on the spot or maybe with a with a, a click and an update button or something like that so um, yeah so that's it I uh, won't make this video go any longer than it needed to so uh, thanks for coming along the ride with me today please like share and subscribe and let me know to, for more content and let me know in the comments section how you guys are doing on this project so with all that said until next time see ya